So you're probably ready to start building websites. We're going to begin that journey this week. But before we start doing that, we're going to need to know a couple of specific rules that are very important for you to be aware of when you build and create websites. The very first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to set up the appropriate folder and file structure in order for your website to function correctly. I'm going to explain how you can optimally set up your folder structure so that your website will always work whether you're hosting it locally on your own machine or FTPing it up to the internet for the world to see. In order to be a good web developer you need to have an excellent handle on file management. If your files end up all over the place on your computer and there's no rhyme or reason to how you name and store the various items that are going to be part of your website then your website is not going to function. So if you can follow these simple rules, you will always have success as far as building a website and then transporting the website to other places. I like to think of the folder that contains my website as a suitcase. It contains all of the relevant material that I'll need for my website. And if I decide to go and travel somewhere, all I need to do is grab my suitcase, i.e. my website, and it will just go ahead and travel with me. Let's take a look at what I have inside the suitcase. The first thing that you'll want to put in the suitcase is a root folder. The root folder is going to contain all of the elements that have to do with the website. Now I like to create a root folder and I call it root because then I know right away that that contains the elements that I'm going to upload to the web. When you're working for a client, there's a high likelihood that you're going to have other things, not just the website that you're doing for them. Anything that is not directly related to the website should not go in the root folder. So if this particular client wants me to create a logo for them or create business cards or edit a video, all of those things can still go in the suitcase that I have for that client, that client's folder, but all of those things need to be contained in their relevant folders. So because we're just building websites, we're only going to be concerned in the root folder. The reason I'm telling you this is that I don't want to see anything that is not directly related to the website inside of the root folder. If you're going to include other elements when you turn in assignments or show me things, make sure that they stay outside of the root folder. I highly encourage you to stay organized because the more websites you build, the more files that you're going to have to manage and if you come up with a strategy right away and always follow that strategy, it's going to be very easy for you to always know where everything is in relationship to the projects that you'll be working on. The other thing that I want to point out is each unique website that you're going to be building will have its own root folder. Let's take a look at what I have inside the root folder. Now the contents of the root folder are not set in stone. You may have some of these files, you may have all of them, you may have more files and folders. But the things that you always have to have is you'll always have to have for a website to function an index.html page. This is your home page and yes it has to be called index.html. You could also call it index.htm and it will work fine, but any other name other than index.html or index.htm will not display when you type in your domain name on the web. So if you type in mydomainname.com and your homepage pops up, it's showing because you've named the file index.html. If you name the file something like home.html or mywebsite.html, then you're going to have to type the domain name forward slash and then the name of that specific file. So in order to make it easy for people to reach your website, we always call the home page index.html. Now one side note on naming files for web use. Whenever you name your files, no matter what they are, images, HTML files, scripts, even the names of folders, you have to follow this rule no spaces, no funky characters. Whenever you're going to name something that's going to display on the web, it always has to be displayed as a name that does not contain any of the things that I just mentioned. So these would all be examples of viable names for use on the internet. When we name files, it is possible to use capitals and lowercase. 
although I do recommend just using lowercase unless you're going to be writing something that has multiple words. This right here is an example of something that we call camel casing, where everything is lowercase except for the first letter of any subsequent words other than the first one. You can see how I've capitalized the S in styles. My naming convention is to use camel casing. So throughout this course, you'll usually see me using camel casing. I like to have this naming convention as my default method because then I know right away exactly how I name the files. If you tend to mix casing, like sometimes use capitals, sometimes use lowercase, well you have to remember all of that because the web is case sensitive, which means that if I name my page page.html with a capital P, when I link to that page or call that page to display, I have to refer to it with a capital P. If I write lowercase p, then it's looking for a file that does not exist, so keep that in mind. As I mentioned, you cannot use spaces on the internet, so in lieu of spaces, if you don't like the camel casing method, you can use underscores, like I have right here, or you can use dashes, like I'm showing you right here. One other naming convention that I recommend is that you don't start any of your files with a numeric character. Although for HTM files, that is something that you can do. It's not recommended for other sorts of file types, like script files, and also when you're creating names within your CSS files, that can be a problem. In order to just keep things a little bit easier for you to remember, I recommend that you do not use numeric characters when you start your file. So it would be fine to name my CSS file mystyles2.css, but I would avoid starting any of the file names with a numeric character. The other thing that you want to avoid when you're naming files for the internet is don't use any funky characters. Don't use question marks and hash marks and percentages. Those can cause problems as well. So the rule to follow is no spaces, no funky characters, and you'll always need to make sure that you include an extension with all of the files. Let's get back to talking about our root directory and how we need to organize that. As you can see in my root folder right here, I have several subfolders that are contained within it, and then of course I have my index page. The index page, as I mentioned, has to be called index.html. It also has to be at the root level, which means that this page cannot be tucked inside my pages folder. It needs to reside at the root level. I am a big fan of keeping things organized, so when you build websites, I'm going to recommend that you put any subpages into your pages folder. That's going to look something like this. Anything other than my index page is going to reside inside the pages folder. This is what we call a sub page and you can see it's going to have a specific name that will be unique to the contents of that page. Any images that I want to display on my site are going to go inside my images folder. Any CSS is going to be located in the CSS folder and any scripts will be in the scripts folder. Now of course the folder names and the file names are unique to your project. They don't have to be named exactly what I've named them. The only name that really matters is that your index page, your home page, is called index.html. Everything else just has to follow the naming conventions that we already discussed. So when you begin to build a website, you'll always make sure that you structure your website directory in this manner. And this way you can keep all of the files and material organized in a way that will make it easy for you to update and make changes to the website. Your pages folder might look something like this, where you're going to have pages, each with their own unique name, and they will all live inside the pages folder. You'll connect these pages together by linking them, and we'll learn how to do this as we go through the class. Another way of looking at our website is to look at it in a site map type of view. The site map is a visual representation of how the site is structured. This is a very simple site map that shows that the index page, the home page, is linking out to these three sub pages. Sitemaps can get quite extensive depending on the size of the website that you're developing, but these are great components of the architecture that can help 
when you're designing and developing a website so that you know how the user can get to which page from what other parental page. And as we go through this course, we'll learn how to do all of those things. So now that you know a little bit about how to organize the files and folders within the root directory, remember that's the folder that's going to contain all the components of your website, you're ready to start developing your website, and once your website's done, you can travel with that website and put it in different locations and ultimately get it up on the internet so anyone can view it.